Hello everybody, the History Guy here. We're going to get into the Battle of Nansamon River here on the Ultimate General Civil War Union uh, Legendary Campaign. But first, I've gone back to replay the second half of the Battle uh, the Siege of Suffolk. So I've taken the advice of a few of you who said, hey, you know, just like I said during that video, these, are, these fortifications kind of stink. Uh, so I've pulled back after the first phase of the battle. Uh, once my reinforcements came in, I pulled back to the tree line on my left side. And it's definitely working out pretty well. And my reinforcements are just now all getting up into position. And now once we've done that, I'm going to go ahead and send my cavalry out. But of course, be more cautious with said cavalry this time. And here he goes. He's trying to ride through the lines. So we'll go ahead and hit those guys. And uh, we'll just see how it ends up and compare it to the last time. Should be much more favorable for me this time around. And then we'll head into the Battle of Nansamon River. All right, so we're gonna try to be much more cautious this time around. Save myself, make sure that I have plenty of energy left to pursue things. Hopefully we're gonna wipe out this battery first. We've already taken out half his men. The other half should be far, not far behind. We'll run into Smoot, but then I think we'll pull off Oh, we just wiped out his cavalry, too. Wow, that was impressive. Now we're going to get out of there. Go back to the safety of the woods. My condition stayed pretty good. The lowest condition unit after that is at uh, about 66%. But very quickly managed to finish off a 1,000-man cavalry unit and a 600-man battery without taking very many casualties of my own. Meanwhile... They've pretty much given up attacking me on my left. There's still a few men in range on the right, but really not a whole lot. And uh, I'm definitely cutting down on my casualties significantly. Alright, we're going to ride the cav down into these guys along the river rather than going deeper behind enemy lines. Let's see if we can take out Jenkins before he sends too much to help out. Yeah, we're just going to stay on these guys. I'm not going to worry about these skirmishers. We're going to ride them right down the water, right in front of these men, who hopefully will fire on them. Though they don't seem to be. There we go. Alright, got to be careful here, because we're headed towards other infantry units, so we're going to disengage. Let's go ahead and ride back behind my own lines. Keeping these guys much more intact this time around. So it might mean that I take out less in the rear, but it means that I keep my cavalry intact and they should all come out of here two stars. All right, time to gobble up another battery and then hopefully another one after that. Just gotta be careful of what's behind Shoemaker that I can't see. I'm sure there's more artillery back there and possibly other things that I don't know about. But we'll find out here in a second. I can quickly disengage if it comes to it. Condition's still pretty good. There's three 600-man artillery batteries and a 1,000-man cavalry unit that have all been completely wiped out by my cavalry. start disengaging. Oh no, we didn't finish him yet. There we go. Alright, get out. And that's going to pretty well do it for this battle. I'm not going to advance out of my fortifications. I'll just shoot at whoever comes at me. And we're going to be pretty content with that being all the cavalry does. Alright, so we're going to see how this compares this time around. Actually, very favorably. Uh, last time around, 
59.59 where the loss is right here. Uh, so 2,000 fewer, and I guarantee almost all of that 2,000 fewer comes at my troops. Uh, last time I lost seven guns and 200 men, so slightly higher, but just barely, pretty much comparable. But here's the big one, 436 cavalry compared to 1,400 last time. So about 3,000 better where my troops are concerned. Over here, uh, I inflicted about 1,600 fewer casualties on the infantry. So that's uh, still pretty good. About 600 fewer on the artillery uh, and about 500 fewer on the cavalry. So uh, about 2,500 fewer casualties inflicted on him uh, with 3,000 uh, fewer on my side. So pretty comparable, but I come out in much better position, especially keeping all of my cavalry intact and having lost fewer. That means they don't take nearly as much money to uh, reconstitute. So all in all, uh, I believe a better situation. Let's see how it affects his overall numbers. They're pretty much the same. Um, about a 3,000 man difference there. So everything is about the same. I'm going to go back and look and see what the training number looked like last time compared to this time. All right, that's actually a big deal because his training number was actually significantly less last time. So it's actually much, much higher this time around. Uh, so that's a little bit disappointing, but that probably reflects my better constituted army as well. So I don't know. Um, so that's a little disappointing. So honestly, I'm not sure how much it really helped me where that's concerned, but I'm not going to worry about too much. I'm going to press on from here. We're going to go ahead and put that point into economy like we did before. I'll go ahead and get my army rebuilt and we will head into Nansamon River. All right, here we go, Nansamon River. A couple of things about my army in this one. It looks like I forgot to top off a couple of my batteries, but I've got five batteries, uh, all either one or two stars, and I use as many batteries of 20-pounders as I have, uh, plus one pattern of 10-pounder parrots. And on top of that, I've got three assault brigades right here, here, and here. All 2,500 men using... Uh, 1842 muskets. They're the best at melee attack. They're also the cheapest to replace uh, these men. So while they don't have any experience, I'm basically going to use them to spearhead the assault. We're just going to run them kind of like uh, the Fort Wagner assault, only hopefully a better result, uh, right up through these woods into the fort once I've done as much damage as I can to those batteries. And we're just going to spearhead the assault with them, and then we'll send in the good units behind them to fire. So that's the plan. We'll see how it works out in reality. I'm not going to worry too much about kind of enveloping him on this side. I'm going to hope that I'm able to destroy these batteries without that. Uh, the fear is always that the batteries escape because the batteries have to be destroyed to win this battle. So I usually have come around this side to kind of box him in so he has nowhere to go. But we're going to hope that's not the case here. But we will see. Okay, we're going to go ahead and start moving into position. I definitely want to get some skirmishers. I know he's got a decent amount of artillery himself. And most of this first phase is just going to be the, the shootout between artillery. And then in the second phase, once this 47 minutes ticks down, then we get the gunboats along here. And that's when we'll really want to be able to light him up while I can see what's going on. I don't think I can get close enough on my own to see them right now, but I'm hoping maybe I will. And we're definitely going to use every bit of this supply. And I'm just going to start getting my assault troops into position here. They're going to take some losses from his artillery. Looks like right now all we're going to be able to see is his infantry right there. I'm going to see if I can send these skirmishers up. Okay, there we go. Oh, let me pause so I don't want to go too far ahead here. Alright, I'm going to back these guys off. I don't need them taking those casualties. All right, so our artil the artillery should be able to spot him now. Once we get them into position, let's go ahead and get them firing. 
Uh, Kasky, Deering, and Stribling are the three batteries that we've got to take out. We're going to do that as best I can. Cable's kind of hanging out here, so let's move this way with him. Make sure everybody's firing on a battery. Just waiting on the 10 pounders to get in position. All right. Now we just hope, I mean, these are huge batteries, so it's gonna take a while to bring those numbers down. I'm hoping by not attacking ahead of time that what I'm doing is I'm not gonna drive all his units over toward the fort, which tends to happen. So we'll see. He's taking out a lot of mine too, mostly in this 120 pounder unit. So I think I'm gonna have to pull them back. They're taking too many casualties right now. All right, here we go with the ironclads. And they're gonna take, you can see immediately, just within the first few seconds, this first one's taking some damage. So we'll soften these guys up as much as I can in the time that I have. So down to two hours and 15 minutes to go and you can see the first ironclad's about to be taken out, the Mount Washington. They're gonna be gone. He's gonna start on the second one. But we've got these batteries down to almost half strength. Uh, at some point I'm gonna have to launch my assault and they're certainly not gonna be destroyed by then but we'll at least wait until these guys are all taken out. It's only, what time is it? It's uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, so I'm thinking I should have time to go past the timer on this one. So I am not gonna move into that fort any sooner than I absolutely have to. So bringing these 20 pounders back here did protect them. They haven't suffered any further damage, nor have really any of my batteries. So we're gonna let this keep on going. So an hour and a half to go. It's actually marking Deering as destroyed, even though he's not. I guess he got below some magic number. Maybe the number's 200, I don't know. But I've weakened his batteries to the point where I don't think he's gonna have enough to finish off all three of these ironclads. We'll see. But uh, I think I should probably start getting my guns to fire on the other batteries now. Not that from this distance they're really that accurate anyway. Okay, Deering's gone. So we might be able to destroy all these batteries but without setting foot in the fort, which would be ideal because as soon as I start assaulting the fort, he may pull them out anyway, and then I've got a real problem on my hands because I can't get them destroyed. So I'm going to count on the fact that this timer is meaningless for me because it doesn't seem to be warning me too badly that I need to hurry up and rush into the fort. So if I can assault this fort without batteries at all, I'll be happy with that. Let's see if Stribling gets marked. Yep, as destroyed. As soon as he gets down to around 160, it seems like they mark it as destroyed. So now we just got to do the same to Kasky. And then we'll march in and take the fort. Let's go ahead and watch this play out for a couple minutes. So he's going to take out the US, ah, USS Cohasset. But the stepping stones, I don't think, is going to be taken out. Okay, all three batteries are marked as destroyed at this point. We'll wait until they disappear, and then we'll go ahead and march on the fort. We'll let the let my guns start softening up his infantry a little bit. There's two. Okay, now the guns. Some of my guns are starting to fire on his infantry, so we'll soften law up. 
And then we'll go ahead and march in. Alright. I'm going to go ahead and start moving these guys up the up the woods here. And then we're going to follow them up with the Ohio Outlaws and the Fighting Finns. Oh, I forgot about one of my assault units. Butler's not one of them. Oh, man. All right, well, that's a problem. Well, that actually won't, might not be too bad because having another assault unit there might be helpful because these guys are going to take some serious casualties. The batteries are destroyed. The tricky part comes now because now we've got to assault the fort and obviously the lead units are going to take a lot of casualties doing that. Don't fire, just go. third assault unit up there all right we dislodged him that's the key that's really the big thing that I need there keep moving assault so that assault actually was much less painful than I expected it to be. Nice. Okay, these guys' conditions at zero, so I'm obviously not gonna go charging into Robinson Robertson with him. No, 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 no. We're going to keep this bad boy going for a while. Okay, now we're going to we're going to man these fortifications. What I'd love to see happen at this point is for him to re just kind of come back after him. I doubt he will. But man, that would be beautiful if I started being able to Now we can see his army for the first time. He started moving out this way and he did, I don't think he expected to find that I had units down here. Alright, so this doesn't matter a whole lot at this point, but I'm going to go ahead and move these guns up anyway, just in case we can keep this going for a while. Because here comes Armistead. He's going to try and retake this fort. supply down here but I'd like to get some of these guns up in the fort if I can and then we're gonna play this out for as long as I can see how many how many casualties I can inflict on him as he tries to retake ah darn it it <laughs> ended it so I lost 676 men and three guns and those were probably right at the very beginning Took out 51 guns, 2,000 infantry. Uh, so a very minor battle where casualties are concerned. 
But man, that's a glorious way to win. And we captured six 24 pounders in the process. So I'm very pleased with that. Very happy to get out of there in a relatively bloodless fashion. So that gets me up to 80 um, on reputation point, which I will have to spend down before we get to Chancellorsville. Um, I'm thinking now's probably the time to start thinking about logistics, but huh, I don't know. I'm going to go training for now. So the next one comes this really fun, tricky, man, his army size went up quite a bit. It went up to seventy five to 80,000 after that battle. Uh, the supply raid, which is a tricky, tricky one. Uh, never been a huge fan of that battle, so it'll be interesting. But that'll be next. So let me know your thoughts. Uh, do you think I should have gone in earlier and maybe tried to cause more casualties? Or is that probably the best way to do that, relatively bloodless? Uh, I feel pretty good about it. But we'll see when we get to Chancellorsville. So I'm, I'm actually kind of curious to see, at least as of right now, what his numbers look like for the first part of Chancellorsville, understanding they're going to change. Um, good news is I'm on the defensive a lot on this battle. And at least it looks for now like the scaling is not going to hit me as hard as it might on some other battles. Uh, now we'll see how that plays out in reality once I actually build my army up. But right now I'm feeling pretty good. If those are the numbers I went into Chancellorsville with, I would feel good about that. Uh, being on the defensive, I could definitely do some damage to him there. So let me know your thoughts. Please hit that thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And we will see you again with another battle real soon. Thanks for watching.